Okay, so let's go over the full wave rectifier. In the previous activity, we did a half wave rectifier. We can create a better rectifier and reduce, if in the context of a design of a power supply, reduce the capacitor values that we need if we do full wave rectification. So if we have a voltage source here, what we are going to do is to have a diode bridge, which is a circuit comprised of four diodes configured as follow, follows. So we have two diodes like this in parallel, and then we have these two other diodes. Now we connect the load here. Okay, we're going to have the load RL. This is our output voltage. I'm going to call this diode A, B, C, and D for the purpose of our analysis and see what happens for an input waveform the sinusoidal so just a couple of cycles here this is our input yes of t this is the magnitude positive magnitude negative now, what happens is that when the voltage is positive, this diode is going to conduct. So we have a diode drop there, current goes through the load, and then goes back here. And this also conducts. That's the, the path, right? So what we have is during the positive half cycle we have a a path that is a r l b and if we had an ideal diode this is what will happen okay. and the have we rectification now the diodes do not conduct during the negative half cycle. But in this case, what's going to happen is that during the negative half cycle, right, you're going to have so you can say, okay, now this is neg more negative. A is open, right? But C is going to be conducting B is open, so we have here RL and then the D conducts. So during the negative half cycle, you have conduction through C R L D. Okay, so during both half cycles, current flows through RL from top to bottom. So the output voltage is always positive, meaning we did that and now it does this. And then during the negative, that's this. Positive, that's this. Now, this is the ideal model if the diode was a closed switch. In reality, what we have is two diode drops, so it actually looks something like this. Let me get a little bit thicker.
full wave ratification. Okay. Now let's do a little bit more analysis. So we already determined that from here to here, right? We are going to have two diode drops. Let's look at the positive side. We go, oops, here. One diode drop, two diode drops. So this, in the, in the output, what we have is 1.4 volts less than Vm. Okay, the actual diodes. So we have Vm minus 1.4 volts in full wave rectification. We also saw that well, in halfway ratification, the period was the same, right, positive to positive, as the input, or the frequency is the same. This was for halfway ratification. In full wave ratification, this is half now, one half T, where T is the period of your input waveform. And the peak inverse voltage, in this case, what we have is going to be V maximum, this is minus 1.4 volts, we have two voltage drops plus 0 0.7. So what we have is V maximum minus 0 0.7, approximately Vm for applications. Just remember that we are talking about the, when the diodes are not conducting, what is the maximum reverse voltage that you have? Peak inverse voltage, we are talking about this region here. And you wanna ensure that it's less than your breakdown voltage. Okay, so we have full wave rotification. The frequency of the output waveform is twice the frequency of the input. Or you, the period of the output is half the period of the input. As you can see, the period is half than what you had before. Now this full wave rectifier it's a good building block if you want to buy, if you want to build power supplies. You can also create peak detectors, anything you want to do. This is a diode. Remember, you have here a diode bridge, you have, you have those in a simple package. So the second part of the activity, B, is let's create a peak detector. And this is the simplest unregulated power supply. So what happens if we go ahead and we add a capacitor here. That's our peak detector. Right? So you're thinking about our full wave rectifier and having this behavior at the output for an sinusoidal input. This is B output without the capacitor, once you add the capacitor, what we're going to see is that we're going to charge, and then when the voltage is less, the capacitor, you can think about this circuit being disconnected, and the capacitor discharging through the load. Having this, see, this behavior. For very low capacitor values, this may go like that. Right? So you charge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge. As you increase the capacitor, as capacitor goes up, this becomes flatter and flatter. So you could conceivably create something like this, which is what we want in a power supply. 
Notice that compared with the halfway rectifier, in the full wave rectifier, you're going to need a lower capacitor. Why is that? Because in the full wave rectifier, the capacitor ready to charge and then keep it all the way to here. Right? The period is half. And so, if you recall, in the previous activity, we had mentioned that the capacitor value was going to be determined by the load current times the time divided by the ripple voltage. The, the, so, depending on the ripple, for a particular ripple, let's imagine that you want that the ripple is less than 1 volt or 0 0.5 volts, and you provide this much load current, you can select the capacitor, and now what we have is that the T, this is the T of the output, is what? One half T of the input. So we have that this is I load times T input over 2 divided by the ripple voltage. So what is the conclusion? C is half the value of the one required for the halfway rectifier. Understand that if you need more capacitors, you can put them in parallel to create a bigger capacitor. Thank you.